won't do that. And if we have a proper fear of God in our life, you won't do it either. And that's the truth. And, and the Bible is very, very, very serious about fornication. It is not some minor sin. It's not some little thing that everybody does. Let's, let's get an example here in Deuteronomy 22 of how highly valued virginity is and purity is. Look at verse number 13. The Bible says, If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her, and give occasions of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Now, it says, if I know not a maid, it means I found her not to be a virgin. So the, the example that's being set forth here is that, hey, here's a man. He married someone. He thought that she was a virgin. He thought she's pure. And then, and it's going to deal with a situation where someone just says that versus it actually being the truth. Okay, so he's saying, here, here's his accusation. I married her, but she wasn't a virgin when I met her. And I didn't know it. And she, was, and, and, and she was presented to me as being chaste, as being virgin, and she wasn't. So verse number 15 says, how to handle this. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. Now, I'm not going to get into detail on what that is, but um, typically this would be something that, that would be received after the wedding, after the consummation of the marriage that proves that the damsel was a virgin at that time and that the, the, the wife's parents hold on to that as proof that, no, you know, our, our daughter was virgin. Verse number 16, And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wipe, and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him, and sh they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. So, there, was, there is no out, to, you know, again, we talked about divorce this morning. There is no cause for divorce here at all, even if he's not pleased with his wife. And the fact that he brings up and tries to tarnish her name, and, and in so doing, what's he doing? He's tarnishing her parents. And what we see here is that the parents, the father especially, is responsible for the purity of their children and especially of their daughters. And fathers need to take this to heart. You know, I take this to heart is that, it's no one else's responsibility but your own. If you leave your kids to themselves, they probably will go out and do and commit fornication and to lose their virginity and things like that. When you just leave them to do things, that will happen. But when they have a father, when they have parents that are there to raise them right and to watch over and protect them. Because there are lots of situations that girls can get themselves in, young girls, because they're naive, because they don't completely understand the way things work. They don't completely understand that there are evil guys out there. They don't understand the danger that they might even be putting themselves in because they're young and they still need the protection of their father to, to help watch over a dad that knows, hey, there's a lot of things that go on in this world and I'm going to make sure that my daughter doesn't fall prey to one of those things. So in maintaining purity, it's a dad's job to make sure that you're not leaving, you're, you're not giving access to your daughter alone with any guy, ever. 